the other part of your business, uh, which is the eyewear business, uh, you all had a target of almost 10 million uh, pieces by 23. Of course, that would have been impacted by um, the pandemic, etc. What is the updated volume target on that one? Actually, the team spent the last two years in really, you know, streamlining the operations of the division and the business, and it shows in the results. It does, and it shows in the. Uh, predictable monthly performance on every line of those results actually. And having done that, having established that foundation and actually created a culture of you know, gross margin cost, all that that I spoke of, now the team is you know, dreaming big from a sales growth point of view and we'll soon be you know, sharing what we actually are gunning for in the eye care business on that front. But that 10 million target, which was the inspiration which Bhaskar and others had started, is certainly going to propel us in that direction. What is it right now? Last, I mean. uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, it's, and I don't know if I recollect, it's about a million and a half or two, under two million, if I recollect right. Um, uh, from the uh, number of pieces point of yes, view. Yes, yes. You so have a serious amount of cash on your books. The balance sheet has never been a problem for Titan. Uh, the group uh, also has a fair amount of strength. Were the need for that capital arise at any point in time as well? Is an acquisition in the eyewear space on your minds? Uh, nothing at the moment. Uh, I think we have reached a fantastic position. The customer value proposition of Titan I Plus, which is our brand. Lenscart, a solid amount of uh, brand equity that they have. They have positioned themselves as uh, you know people who would like to sell online and now are opening stores offline as well. Um, with the kind of valuation drawdowns that we've seen in uh, the new business space over the last year or so, I'm sure uh, you know opportunities like this may have come your way as well. Uh, have you ever thought of something like that? No, we continuously keep thinking about it because after the investment in Carrot Lane seven years back, six years back, we've certainly become very open to that way of growing. Hmm. Um, it's just that the right uh, partner, target, whatever you call it, uh, has to come along. Your market share in the jewelry business uh, has increased from what, four to five percent to about six to seven odd percent. Uh, what would be your uh, you know, aspirational target, double digit, uh, in the next uh, couple of years? Uh, certainly in the direction. It's, it's actually very difficult to actually pin this down because of the nature of the industry. But our sense, because every month we keep an eye on the key players in every city, hmm. and we have a sort of bubbling up of that information for internal consumption to get a sense of that. So if I look at, therefore, in the last one year, two years, three years, four years, like that, quarter on quarter, how much we have grown and what the big competitors in each of the cities has grown. That five becoming seven or eight is through that process of comparison. And if I were to look at it in that same way, yes, should certainly go towards pretty close to 10% in the kind of two to three year time frame because of the, the 2.5x that Ajoy and team have declared also. How do you position Titan for the new age consumer? Women are intrinsically excited about jewelry. Yeah. Now, some women may have a view on why should I spend sort of tens of thousands on a fine jewelry which is made of gold and diamonds. I can buy something which is made of copper, right? But uh, the, the store of value aspect of jewelry is so deeply rooted in the Indian, uh, I would say, DNA hmm. that it would take probably two, three generations for that to reduce, which means the success of a carrot lane or a Mia is because that on the one hand, they are accessories and therefore they are part of your makeup, get up, emotion and all that. But equally, they are store of value. So is now the next leg of uh, you know growth in terms of positioning for the jewellery business, adornment and beauty? Because you came as a person who was extremely pure. The purity of gold was the first plank and organized nature of the business. The, the trust that uh, brand Tata and Tanish bought with Titan, etc. All of that were the planks that you grew on. Now with hallmarking, a lot of that has, uh, you know, 
been standardized, purity, etc. Uh, a lot of the brands have come in as well, some of them in the listed space too. The Tanishq brand and the Tanishq product have both become much, much more central to the purchase by Tanishq customers, I would say at least for a decade now, hmm. as much as the Tanishq purity. Around the 2012s, 13s, in my own conversations with customers, design started becoming central to the, I buy Tanishq because of design. I buy Tanishq because of brand, right? So today Tanishq is bought for brand and design, and of course, Tata and purity. And also for exceptional customer experience and relationships in the store. So while many other companies are listed, many other companies of, are big and well known, on some of these parameters, they are distant from us. And what about the new businesses that you're seeding? Uh, you have skin. Very excited Tanera. about perfumes. Tanera, we want to make Tanera like what we made Tanishq for the jewelry industry in every which way. You were looking to grab a big market share of a growing market in the jewelry business. But out here, I'm not sure how big the ethnic wear market, specifically saris, high-end ones, are growing at and what happens to Tanera in terms of growth when you equate it with the parallel of a Tanish. Can it be as big? Uh, you're certainly right on the point that you make about the Tanera category. Uh, the, the the sari market has got disadvantages from a customer profile who wears saris and the younger women not wearing saris kind of thing. But despite that, the sari industry is very, very large. Uh, in our estimates, it's of the order of 50,000 crores. Okay. Now, women used to, and I'm sure even today, used to buy many more saris than they actually wore hmm. because women are in love with saris. One of the things that we do feel that the sari industry has not done well enough is to actually keep the category current right. from a wearability comfort, from a design relevance, from a craft integration into deep design stories and all that, and keep a certain vitality in the category in the connection with the customer. I think Tanera will, is seeking to do that, is already doing that wherever it is, but will soon do it at a national scale. How about the 20 plus who are not wearing Yeah, things? so there, there are two, three, you know, things sitting there. The 20 pluses have two daughters, both are in that age group. They know how they feel and how they look when they wear a sari. So, you know, we want to bring in, like if Tanera becomes this brand of choice in an LSR or a St. Xavier's uh, a convocation day. Yes. Where everybody in St. Xavier is in Bombay. Or... Are you looking at things beyond saris as well? Uh, are you looking we at already sari? have uh, uh, what do we call S SKD, which is Salwar Kameez Dupatta. Mm. We have Le Lehengas. But the focus in the next couple of years will be saris. And is, is men uh, a part of that? Uh, Not in our uh, thinking at the moment things. because it's too much to sort of focus on it one go. And the perfumes as well, you know, the distribution channels for the perfumes. No, perfumes is, is, is challenging. It's in fact very strange that the penetration of uh, EDP, I mean, is, is as low as it is in a country like India. You know, we are uh, wanting to make it a big thing. No particular strategic uh, uh, sort of thrust that I'm able to share at the moment, but we certainly believe in it and uh, I'm sure soon it'll happen. And the ladies' bags category, which you've just entered, how's the response been? Because, I mean, there was someone uh, to the tune of, uh, uh, you know, VIP as a player. They entered uh, the ladies' bag category as well with Caprici. They found it difficult to, uh, you know, navigate through that market. What makes you confident? See, it's a, uh, wherever it is a product on the person, which makes the person feel good, look good and all that, and where, a certain consumer orientation is useful in building much better value propositions. We have done exceedingly well. A bag for a woman is a product of that kind. And uh, we know what we are capable of. Um, we are very confident that we'll transform that industry. What are your thoughts on uh, international? You have the target of uh, 2,500 crores there. And what are the other categories that are on your mind right now? The big thing at the moment is Tanishq. But uh, we're also dreaming big uh, on uh, eye care. Okay. And uh, we believe that in certain parts of the world, it can be a decent sized business for us. And uh, we'll talk about it in concrete terms when you have something concrete to show. 
But otherwise, the whole idea of forming the international as a separate division was to give the importance to all categories of the company at a CEO level. In India, our focus, is, our focus is to make Tanera much bigger, make bags an exciting category, take perfume to its you know, right levels of scale, take eye care to multiples that yeah. you are asking question. Carrot Lane and Mia are booming, so we got enough wearables, a big thing. So in the next two years, uh, nothing at the moment that I can. Mr. Venkat Raman, you know, you have spelt out the vision that you have for the company. It, it was an extremely strong company before, uh, you know, you took over. In It continues to be in your able, safe hands. And the vision that you have for it uh, should comfort all the investors about uh, the future of the company as well. Um, three years before you turn 65, I believe, uh, have you thought beyond that? I'm really looking forward to the fun I'll have <laughs> after 65 years. And for the company? Oh, company goes on. The Titan company is bigger than any individual.